Bonjour, my good sir. How are you? So tired. Actually, you know what? I do know how she is. Uh, she's a drug addict. And we'll explain why. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, am I? Yeah. No, you definitely are. Based no. on. Why don't? Why don't no. you? Let's just get straight into it. Why don't you okay. tell us what we're talking about today? So we're doing a TV review, which mm. we haven't done before. So we're going to be reviewing uh, Netflix's smash hit. Heartstopper. And how many times have you watched Heartstopper? Just a few. How many? Like above five? <laughs> She's watched it roughly eight times. Uh, and in how quick succession did you watch those eight um, viewings? <laughs> within like a month. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Why don't you why don't you talk to us about what the show's about, Rob? You know what? I think it's it's your it's your love, you tell us. Okay, so it's based on a graphic novel by author Alice Oseman. Um, it's set in England and it is about um, Charlie Spring, who is a recently outed teen in an all-boys school, who one day gets sat next to Nick uh, Nelson in form, which is like homeroom sort of thing in England. And they meet and they sit next to each other and they start to get to know each other and then they become friends and then they become something more and then they fall in love and it's really, really cute. That's, That's the, the show. show. And it also looks into LGBT um, relationships. It doesn't just have the main uh, relationship between Charlie and Nick. It also looks at bisexuality. It looks at transgender, um, you know, people and identities. Um, it, and, you know, it kind of starts to not... It, it doesn't really wrestle with it. This isn't like a, you know, one of those gritty like, oh, they're gay, so their lives are awful. It's kind of the opposite, which is why I actually wanted to talk about this and why I kind of fell in love with it. One word review, let's go. What is it? Um, Hit me, Rob. What is it? My one word review is autumn. Oh, because of the leaves. Because of the leaves. My one word review is Spotify. Ah. Yes. So we'll get into it. You talk about it first because I have much more to talk about. <laughs> well, I was first bombarded with many texts and messages and calls by this one uh, begging me to watch it so she would have someone to talk about it with. Um, so I finally relented yeah. and did watch it. Yeah. It was incredibly cute, um, very wholesome, mm -hmm. very easy watch. Mm -hmm. uh, it felt E e even though there was like this heightened element to it with mm. like the graphics and the kind of like, you know, magical kind mm. of feel to it, it felt very real in mm. the sense that, you know, outside of it being, you know, mostly about an LGBT relationship, it just sort of plugged into reminding you what you felt like when you were a teenager and you had a crush on someone yeah. and you kind of felt all butterflies in your stomach and everything you know i think the best way that i kind of described it is because I, I love the show sex education which is also on netflix um and i found sex education to be incredibly well written and brilliant and smart and um and i thought that sex education was like the best sex education class for teenagers despite the fact that probably teenagers are not allowed to even watch it mm -hmm. but it's also a great sex education class for adults because mm -hmm. it brings up things that even adults don't know but if you remove kind of like the dark comedy and the debaucherousness from sex education, you'd just be left with like the wholesome character development, the wholesome themes. And that's what Heartstopper is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also mm -hmm. we should say, just like last time, we are not people in the LGBT community. So this is not an expert opinion. This is entirely our own, just yeah. like personal opinion and everything Correct. like that as to straight people. First thing I want to talk about is yes, the main reason I was drawn to it in the first place and why I watched it so much. I think as well, it definitely hit me at a time where, you know, I was feeling quite stressed at work and there was a lot of stuff happening in my life, nothing major, just, you know, when everything builds up, like lots of social stuff on and mm. lots of expectations and pressure. And this show was just so nice. It was so wholesome is the right word. It was just, and I, you exactly hit on the point that really um, clinched it for me. It reminded me what it was like to be young 
in a way of like remembering what it was like to have a crush on someone because we are both in long-term very happy long-term relationships it's also been a long time since i've even had a crush on anyone in that way you know of like oh do they like me do they even know i exist and then it progressing to like oh my god do they like me oh my god we're talking all the time you know those feelings those butterfly feelings those moments of like uncertainty of really kind of putting yourself out there and like you could get rejected and at the time that's the worst possible when you're that age in that state of mind of adolescence being rejected is one of the worst possible things that could happen to you at any point right that's why i i hated the the idea of rejection when i was in high school was literally the most terrifying thing to me and so it reminded me of when you were like oh my god they might like be back oh my god what do i do oh what if i'm wrong you know i don't want to lose a good friend blah 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 and it was just it was so nice to just be reminded of the good parts of that because obviously that's another thing. We always touch on the grittiness of high school, but like things like Euphoria and every other bloody high school show in the world. I mean, I I, I, question, was I never attended that high school. I question whether or not Euphoria is realistic to any but high school. But that's like most high school shows now. Even things like Gossip Girl and, and you know, um, like different shows set in high school now, you watch it and you're like, I'm pretty sure I didn't do any of that shit in high school. That's not an accurate high school experience. It feels like an actual high school. I mean, obviously, you know, I was in high school more than 10 years ago now and I can't imagine um, yeah I know uh, I, I, I'm sort of thinking like you know I probably don't know what it's like to be at high school now however just seeing the way that these characters spoke to each other the dialogue between each other the the way that they interacted it didn't feel like that kind of Hollywood everyone's got a witticism last word kind of script writing mm script yeah. writer kind of thing it, it was felt like real yeah it felt like you know when when a character had like a zinger yeah it was like literally felt like the way that a kid would come up with a half formed zinger because they're stupid yeah exactly you know? and i think i also really like the awkwardness and just the mm. kind of like nunness for lack of a better term of it all like it is that is what high school is like you, you're not the like that i'm not saying that the cast is unattractive but it's also not like fully formed adults playing high schoolers where that is not what a high school looks like you know these are people that actually would be in high school this they aren't at their final stage yet they do have these awkward moments and and they don't quite know how to act and they make mistakes and they have yeah. to get over it and they're immature yeah. they felt immature but not in a way where it's like oh they're immature so now they're having sex way too young it's more yeah. like they're immature so maybe they shouldn't have taken that so seriously or mm. maybe they should step back and actually you know like act, think about their actions before they do it. One of the other most impressive things I found was um, whenever you watch something that is set in high school, not only do the high schoolers just seem like they're way too debaucherous, mm -hmm. you know, um, they also seem way too smart because yeah. you give these cat, you have to give the characters problems. There's got to yeah. be conflict to resolve, um, but high school level conflict to an adult brain is always so simple to figure yeah. out. Uh, but to a teenage brain, it's like the biggest deal. But that's always kind of an issue cinematically because- That's not the true teen experience. Well, it's not that it's not the true teen experience. It's more just like if you, in most cases, have your characters too dumb to see the obvious solution, it's not fun to watch for us. Yeah. But in this case, they manage to actually make these teenagers have the realistic teenage problems that an adult can clearly see mm. but we're not sitting here being like oh my god i can see the solution you stupid idiot yeah we were more like come on you can do it i yeah. know you can we were rooting for them yeah, and get, instead of like yeah. criticizing them and when i yeah. meant by not the true teen experience i'm talking the debauchery and that that's not the true teen i mean it might be some but it's not most i'd say mm. first of all this show was made it wasn't made for us it was made for teens. Mm. This was a show that was made to be the one that we didn't get, if that makes sense. Like we didn't have the show when we were young, but we like Alice Osman and other queer people wished they did. It's made for the target audience, but it's done so intelligently. So it has that entry point for us, right? Mm. Secondly, she mentioned that it's very interesting to her that everyone calls this a really wholesome and nice and loving show because she doesn't see it that way. A lot of it comes from elements that we haven't exactly begun to touch on yet in season one, which will come up in season two. However, because if you actually think about it, there's homophobia, there's bullying, there's suicidal thoughts. Yet, it because when you compare it to these other teen shows, 
it feels more realistic. The way in which they happen, it's not literally like, oh, now they've gotten a gun and now they're going to do something awful or... Prettiness oh. doesn't mean realism. Exactly. And of course, if you are someone who is grappling with your sexuality or figuring out who you are, I'm certain you've been hit with some form of homophobia, especially maybe not as much. I don't know what it's like in high school right now, but I'm certain during our generation growing up, there was tons. This show does touch on all of that. It actually doesn't shy away. This show, yes, is wholesome, is nice, is positive, but it doesn't shy away from the dark moments. And I think that's why it has the entry point for us because it's not unrealistic. It is, that is what happens. Like it's not always being beaten up within an inch of your life. Sometimes it's just being bullied by everyone and making fun of, but they're seeing it. They're not seeing themselves as bullies. They're seeing themselves as like, oh, we're just having a bit of fun, mate. You know, which is, is very believable. It's believable, yeah. but also just as harmful. When you yeah. target people like that, you can drive them to to awful things. Yeah. You know, it is so touching and sweet, but it has a level of nuance and intelligence mm. that you wouldn't necessarily think just by looking at the cover. As a comparison, you know, the whole second season of Euphoria is like you know, built around this play that the character, yeah. one of the characters puts on and it's showing all yes. of their dirty laundry. And I'm fucking play about it. Yeah, and yeah. I'm looking at that play, I'm thinking, have you seen high school level plays? <laughs> like, they're terrible. They're so no, bad. No, why the, must you go in that yeah, direction? The, the, the high school play in that show, it's like, that should have been on Broadway. Set fall over you know, it's bit. like, it's, it's just not at all. Ain't nobody committing that hard to a play in high school. No, like, and like the actors doing that scene didn't want to commit that hard to the play. <laughs> Have you read about that? They, a lot of the extras in one of the scenes no. during the play, like they all basically left the next day because they all felt so uncomfortable with what they had to do just for the shoot. Well, and that's you what know? I mean. So I like, because even the this relationship at this center is obviously Charlie and Nick start to fall in love, but a big part of it is Nick figuring out who he is, what he is in terms of like identity. Yeah, the transformative arc is his. It's his, yeah. yes. However, it's very interesting because it's, you know, the way you watch, you're like, oh my God, look, they're kissed. Oh, they're holding hands, blah, blah, blah. But like, Charlie is having to deal with keeping this a secret. That's that's a big thing to grapple with. Nick, why doesn't Nick want to come out? Why is this thing being grappled with? Because he's afraid of being seen differently in the eyes of his friends and the eyes of his mum. you know? Mm. Why is that? Because it's inherently, cons like he is afraid of the negative. And having said all that, flipping on the other side of it being whimsical and wholesome, I think that's also really important because up until now, name me off the bat another story about an LGBT love story that is just a nice romantic comedy. Um, exactly. Yeah. You have someone running through the rain, coming to declare their love for you. You know, you have the big declaration moment at the end where you, you know, the other person's pulling away and they have to do this big moment, you know? All of that is something we've gotten tenfold, hundredfold. And this show is finally giving that, especially to young people. And it's just so fucking nice to see. All that being said. <laughs> it's not perfect. <laughs> it's, it's not perfect in one key area, mm -hmm. which is the character Tao. Sorry, um, Will Girl. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's not you. Um, if you watch this. It's, <laughs> yeah. I, I think the, the problem is, is that the way that the character is just written and his arc is incredibly irritating. Mm -hmm. He's fucking annoying. Yeah, he's yeah. very annoying. Um, and to the detriment of the story, I mm -hmm. think, uh, not too much. And the main problem is, I think, okay, if there's gonna be like the friend who feels like, you know, you're not getting the attention, he's mm. feeling a bit lonely, he's got abandonment issues, yeah. I get all that, he needs to overcome that. That's why he's irritating, because yeah. he's getting in the way of the relationship we wanna see form. Yeah. Get that. My issue is that he's doing all of these very irritating things that every character recognizes is irritating, including... Uh, L. Including L. Mm -hmm. So why the fuck... Does she have a crush on him? Does she have a crush on him? <laughs> I don't buy it. I don't buy that she would find any of his behavior endearing. Like, I, I get that he's annoying and everything, but I don't know why I, like, if I was in Charlie's position, I would have just been like, oh my God, we're together. Fucking leave me alone, right? Yeah. But in the graphic novels, the reason why is because it, 
it is suspected that because of Tao's tendency to speak like quite loudly or talk back or his character, he is the reason why Charlie got outed. So Charlie came out to his friends and then Tao was talking about it. Someone overheard as a result, Charlie got outed. Mm. And so Charlie is hesitant to share this development because he doesn't want Nick to be outed similarly. Mm. That makes more sense. It and just, in it that, justifies that within and, the graphic novel, but the, it's not in the show. I know. So. And in, that's why in the graphic novel, but also the way he reacts to it, it's a little bit of anger, mostly sadness and shame, and then they're fine, like Tao does. While on the show, he's just angry. But I also can't fully say that I wouldn't have done the same thing as a stupid teenager, because that's what he is. And that's kind of speaking to what we were saying before, mm. and this is my rebut, is like, he is absolutely not acting rationally. He is completely irritating. He's completely annoying. But I'm sure I was like that too. I'm certain I was. I specifically was like Tao. I am sure I sh share certain traits. And that's potentially why I find him so irritating. Having said all that, the reason why Elle likes him is because we are not rational with who we have crush crushes on. People like people who other people find irritating. That's why people end up in relationships with um, people that their friends might be like, what the fuck? Why? It's called the rose colored glasses for a reason. And so that's why I, I yeah, believe I mean, it. The, I think the, the problem I have with that is that like... You're an adult, I think, is the main no, issue. No, I, th I think the show wants us to... If the, the show frames it as another cute relationship, not as her I, being stupid. I think it would be know? cuter if I was 10 years younger. You know what I mean? And I think that's the set. I still that's... find him very irritating. Oh, and yes, I fully agree. And for me, it was the most negative part of the show. Yeah. But having said all that, if that's the most negative part of the show. Yeah, it's, it's doing well. Anyway, we should get to the rating. Yeah, that's fine. You go first. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a very good show. I clearly didn't like, you know, IV it straight to my, you know, blood as much as yeah. you did. But it is a shining treasure. Yes, yeah. obviously it's a shining treasure. It's as shining as a treasure can get. It's a fucking diamond. Yeah. I'm so excited. And the reason we're doing this review as well is because season two is just wrapped filming. Mm. And uh, it is going to be coming out early next year. So, and it just, it is ironically a show that just kind of keeps coming up in the news. So obviously when it came out, it blew up. And then unfortunately people accused Kit Connor of queer baiting and then he had to out himself on the Which, internet. Which like... Don't do that. Yeah, and this is what I mean by it's yeah. no one's business. Like, yeah. it's literally no one's Leave business. Leave the man alone. Yeah. Like, Leave he, the boy. Like, he's yeah. only just turned 18. He's a mm. child still. Mm. And then now they've, they've um, about to, we're about to have the Children and Family Emmys that they're nominated for, like, nine of. It'll and, win, like, all of them, I'm sure. fucking, oh, I'm sorry about it. Yeah, anyway, you're yeah. going to rage quit if they don't. Well, you can, editing, Rob, because it'll have passed by the time you're editing this, put what the results were. And then just put a crying face or a happy face. We'll yeah. see. We'll see what happens. Here it is. Here's the results. Is it like, I'm... am I going like, oh my God, that's so amazing. Yay. Or am I going like, oh, the world is no justice. The darkness comes. And whichever one it ends up being, I'll just put that clip back in for a second time. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, that's so amazing. Yay. Oh, the world is no justice. The darkness comes. Very good. Done. Very good. All right. That's us. Thanks for taking a break with Clean Slate.